Well, this is the second video that we're doing that, that shows how the system works. I apologize for the shakiness of the camera. It's windy and I'm old and shaky, so you just have to do the best you can at gaining some information. This is a big 275 pound tote that we had to go to. The original pictures that we showed was a 55 gallon drum. Um, when you get those, either of these or whatever, get food grade. It has to be food grade. Uh, our 55 gallon drum had uh, strawberry jam in it. I don't know what this one had in it, but you can buy them, look around. It doesn't come green. This comes uh, opaque, but in the sunlight, it will get algae in it. So we took it out of the frame and painted it. So that's one thing we did. The 55 gallon drum ran all 19 of our tubes uh, during the winter just fine. It last three or four days. But in the summer we were filling it twice a day and Larry Hall, as I mentioned, watching his videos, I talked to him. He suggested I get this. I didn't think it would fit, but we made it work. And in the heat of the season, when we were growing all the tomatoes and the peppers, uh, we would fill this every other day. Anyway, the way it works, you can see the pipe on the left going up and over and in. That's a supply line from our watering system, our house water. We can manually uh, fill it or we can put it on a timer. So we keep the, uh, the tub pretty well full, but it, it can last however long it needs to and then refill it. So that's the heart of the system. And it needs to be located higher than your pipes and your float. And here's the, the bucket that we have the float in. As I mentioned in the other video, this section where you're seeing here, these three are 10 feet long and these are the ones that we started with. And we made a trial and we loved the way it grow, grew stuff and so on. So Sherry removed the lid and uh, it has a float in it. You probably won't need one that big. Let me see the other float. This not very good here. This is another float that's smaller. You can get it on Amazon. They're around eight to ten dollars a piece. And uh, the reason we use one float is because it's easier and less expensive. Larry Hall, in his, for example, in the end of his pipe here, he would cut uh, an area out and mount one of these valves in the end of each pipe. That gets pretty expensive. However, if you have unlevel ground and so on, you may have to do something like that or string two or three together if you want more. But the idea is is that the pipes have the these are four inch sewer pipes. Uh, I got from Lowe's. I got all the fittings and stuff from Lowe's. If you're worried about adapting it and how we did it and all fitting, if you just go there and tell them what you're trying to do and kind of have a little sketch or something, they are great in helping you come up with what you need to adapt both into the, for example, into the float and out and so on. This is half inch pipe that we use uh, uh, to supply. As I say, the, the tote needs to be high, the water supply needs to be higher so that it fills by gravity. Your pipes need to be level from this end to that end. They have to be level that way. And if you are stringing more than running several off from a float, they all have to be level. That was a challenge when we went to putting in our 19 pipes, 16 additional ones. Those are 15 feet long. The ones here are th uh, 10 feet long. We get uh, eight uh, bus tubs per each uh, pipe 
on, on that system and it will depend if you adapt yours to whatever you want to grow in whether it's bigger containers in this one we as you can see we constructed it with two by sixes that we glued and, and screwed together and they have stayed straight we did it that way because we grew potatoes here uh, not successfully certainly the cheapest potatoes are we decided not to grow anymore but that's that's why we did this and you'll notice i think you can see that they're pretty straight we did single two by sixes here and i don't know if you can tell down there but they are warping where we live it is so hot and dry and the the uh, lumber that you get is so full of moisture that when it dries it warps we found this other didn't the reason we went to the four by fours we thought they would not warp as much but the problem with that is that uh, they were not tall enough the pipes outside diameter is like four and a half inches if i remember correct and so it wasn't high enough so we had to put a two before well that made it too high so then we had to rip the two before and plane them down to get them all the right size uh, and what you want to do can you pick this tote up sherry what you want to do is have the here that show the net oh, the net cups are not up there you want to have sorry i'm not a filmer you need to have the pipe level with your support from the wood so that the uh, net cups will fit as deep as possible while we're talking that let me show you how we did it with these bus tubs here is our bus tub and as you can see we have two holes drilled in and we put two net cups because it's very dry here and we thought that we would need more uh, moisture in your area because uh, you if you get a lot of rain you may get by with just one uh, the, they're three inch net cups show us the net cup sherry oh she's not prepared i told her to, to be prepared okay there's the net cups they're three inch we get it off amazon and what the way we make this work is we take weed guard that you can buy and cut them in 10 inch squares and wrap we've tried we made them and put them inside they don't you need to keep the roots from growing into the water because they will fill your pipes and cause a problem so we wrap the net cups like that then we take the net cup and fill it with very saturated soil mix and we'll explain what soil mix we use later and then make kind of like a snow cone out of it and then put in about a third of your mix and water it in good and another third and water it in another third water it in and the holes there are 10 quarter inch holes drilled around the perimeter that's for when it get you get rain and it will um, you don't want your plants sitting in water so it will drain out very well so the holes are uh, for a three inch net cup with the weed guard on you probably could drill a three inch holes we drilled two and seven eighths so that they didn't fall through but then when you put it in you need to push that net cup down as far as you can because you want the water level in your uh, pipes to be as high as possible before it runs out the holes that you've drilled and as much of the net cup in the uh, water solution as possible and that will do it we did not have any problem uh, we grew in the winter we had all kinds of winter crops we had two uh, net cups in and we never saw any problem with being oversaturated or whatever so you may just have to try something in your area maybe one or if you get lots of rain again this is not a be all end all but we have found great success with it 
again your pipes need to be level from front to top end to the bottom end of it um, and if you string several together run off one float they all have to be level we could not do it ourselves so we had some people i showed them where i wanted them and how far apart and we put cinder blocks down as a base underneath our system uh, and we leveled all of the blocks all the way across and then i we made our uh, cut our wood and so on and hopefully you can see underneath they're just like uh, two posts one on each end and the, and then a cross beam four by four and that's what supports i would we laid our pipe directly on top of these support beams and then match the wood to it my suggestion would be sorry to be moving here but my suggestion would be from what we learned is you use two by six and you glue and screw them together like this and then on a table saw or if you have a, a hand uh, rip saw you can cut off on one edge all the way along and just make the what's the, the width of the board the same height as your pipe and that's as much easier than the way we did it and it seems to be stronger and hold you might get by by just using a single one but in our area it warps you may just have to try it i like the security of the double and the strength no matter what you put on it as far as deciding where the holes go you'll have to do that based upon what kind of container you use uh, these uh, are closer together because they're smaller <laughs> containers so you'll have to determine all of that based upon your needs and your growing area we put on ours some of them you see are out we have drained those uh, we put something on the end a, a cap that we could take out so we could drain them not have water all summer and not have need for it and so we just cleaned it out and used the water in the garden elsewhere um, i can't think of anything else to answer uh, maybe what well, you can see the picture on uh, our pictures that we put up we put a valve at the head of each one so that we can individually turn off any that is not growing anything and so we have a valve on, on all of them you'll have to get a cap find a way to mount your uh, water supply in the cap and so on but you'll figure that out and if you watch some of larry hall's videos it'll help uh, the beauty that i will say about this system i know some were asking uh, we had some of our tubs turn sideways and so on well when we had tomatoes and peppers growing along here we had nothing over on the right side so we just turned them and got the net cups out of the water still covered them with the tubs so that they didn't grow algae and get stuff in them and we didn't so we didn't use the water there then we had a whole row of peppers right down through here and after we pulled the tomato plants so we just picked up the peppers and moved them all over here onto one and we're trying to nurse those through this heat we've been over 110 here for a week so they're suffering a little bit and then we're finding out which ones we can grow in this area in the heat and so on um, can't think of it much of anything else we, oh i will say that we tried building the 15 feet long by staggering and trying to splice them together and they're just heavy and warped and so we went to eight footers and cut off six inches and we put them as you can see i think here we put them right over the support beam and screwed them in so they're all very solid 
I would not, uh, when you put the pipes down, get them where you want, bring the wood up to the side of them just so that it's snug, they don't move around, and then screw them down. Uh, I think that covers almost all of the, the thing. The idea is, is to keep the water level as high as possible without running out the uh, cuts, the holes that you drilled. And if you're not level, it'll run out one because it's the lowest. So anyway, hopefully this helps. If there are any other questions, you can uh, put them up on Facebook. I'll try to answer, but this is the end of section two.